this is the GTX 1070, one of the highest rated GPUs ever produced by Nvidia. But in 2024, is it one of the best value graphics cards you can buy for less than $100 on the used market? In order to find out the answer to that, I've tested this 1070 at 1080p to see if it's worth picking up in 2024. I looked out with this GTX 1070 Gaming from MSI. I paid just £80 for it, shipped to my door from eBay, and it's not like I even had to clean it either because it came with fresh thermal paste and the temperatures were fine just out of the box. The specs of the 1070 are actually pretty beefy, especially for 2016, rocking 1920 CUDA cores, but more importantly, in the modern day, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which is running through a sensible memory bus. This means 1080p gaming with 8 gigabytes of VRAM is going to be totally fine, even if you crank the textures up onto high or ultra. I didn't run into any issues in today's testing, so you should be set. Also, ray tracing isn't available on this graphics card. It is a GTX GPU after all, so the VRAM's not going to be a concern. So, to see if this eight-year-old GTX 1070 still has what it takes to play games at 1080p, and more importantly, if it's a decent value, I've tested it in my GPU testing system, which has an Intel Core i5 12400F, 32 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD, and an MSI B660-A Pro. All of the specs for this system are linked below with Amazon affiliate links. I do make a small kickback off of these, but it does help out the channel. So let's see how this 1070 gets on. Kicking off the benchmarks today with Cyberpunk 2077 and it's a known fact that Pascal cards don't really perform that well in it. However, on the low preset with high settings, the 1070 gets above 60 FPS on average and the 1% low wasn't looking too bad either with 54 FPS. So if you wanted to play Cyberpunk on a GTX 1070, keep it to the low preset and just put the textures on high and you'll be having a good gaming experience. Up next is Hogwarts Legacy and you're still set for a 60 FPS experience today, even on the medium preset with high textures. So the game looks pretty good on these settings, but that 1% low doesn't look pretty good at just 41 FPS. This might be a bit of a problem for you, but Hogwarts Legacy does suffer from frame pacing issues. So this doesn't come that much as a surprise. In hindsight, I should have set Forza Horizon 5 to the high preset because 93 FPS on average with a 1% low of 77 FPS on the medium preset is very good performance. So if you were cool with lowering that frame rate, say if you had a 60 Hz 1080p monitor, use the high preset or even the ultra preset and you should be set in Forza Horizon 5. Like usual, any mid-range card made within the past decade will perform fine in Fortnite and that trend continues today. With getting north of 200 FPS on average and an excellent 1% low as well, the GTX 1070 is set for Fortnite, especially if you set it to DirectX 12 as well. That will limit the amount of stutters that you see. So these are the settings I'd recommend in Fortnite and the 1070 is a totally perfect card for it. On the medium preset in F123, the GTX 1070 provides a competitive frame rate with 126 FPS on average, and the 1% low was also very good in the triple digits too. So if you wanted to play F123 competitively, the GTX 1070 has got enough compute performance for that. Spider-Man Remastered is optimized excellently and this is what all game developers should set as a standard because the game will just basically run on anything on the high preset getting north of 60 fps on the gtx 1070 is excellent performance and this is the preset which i'd recommend the one percent low at 53 frames per second isn't particularly the best performance but it's smooth enough and the game felt fine so i'm not really that concerned Taking a look at another esports game and Rainbow Six Siege with the GTX 1070 is no bother at all. Getting 270 frames per second on average with a 1% low of just under 200 frames per second. I think it's fair to say if you wanted to play Siege competitively, the GTX 1070 is a totally fine graphics card for this. And if you wanted to up that performance even further, say if you've got a 360Hz monitor, lower it to the low preset and you should be good for that as well. 
Last game up today is a bit of a VRAM hog, so it's a good job the 1070 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM. That is because Horizon Zero Dawn is very VRAM intensive, but getting just over 60 frames per second on average and the 1% load just below 50 frames per second means the game is relatively smooth and I don't think you would have any issues at 1080p on the high preset in Horizon Zero Dawn. So yeah, the 1070 is still a very decent GPU. So the GTX 1070 can indeed play games and play them pretty well at 1080p. Every game I tested today got at least 60 FPS, even in the case of Cyberpunk that got 67 or something along those lines FPS on average. But this just goes to show that a GPU like this in 2024 is still totally fine. Admittedly, some of the games I tested today, I did put them onto the low preset, but the most important quality setting, which is the textures, I kept them on high. This just goes to show that eight gigabytes of VRAM on this graphics card was a good design choice from Nvidia because yeah, you can play with high textures at 1080p even eight years after this GPU's launch. But if you want pretty lighting and nice reflections, this GPU isn't going to cut it in newer games. Obviously it's not going to. It's a sub $100 GPU on the used market and it's not an RTX one either. And of course the esports games are going to run fine on a graphics card like this. Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege were easily doable for a 240 hertz experience. So if you wanted to play some games competitively, if you had a 144 hertz monitor, the 1070 is going to be fine for that. And Pascal also supports Nvidia Reflex low latency, especially in games like Fortnite. So if you wanted as little input lag as possible, I mean, this graphics card's set for that. So, given the performance of the GTX 1070, I'm going to have to recommend it as one of the best value sub $100 GPUs on the used market. And I picked this one up for £80 here in the UK where they usually go for around £110, something along those lines. And I think that is an excellent deal on a GPU like this. The performance you're getting for the price you're paying, I mean, it makes it an excellent value. So yes, I can recommend this GPU, especially for the next couple of years, basically until ray tracing becomes a necessity in newer games, which it is kind of looking like it might be going that way with games like Alan Wake 2, or when Nvidia finally pulls the plug on Pascal, which I don't think is gonna happen anytime soon, as they're still supporting Maxwell GPUs. So I think Pascal's totally fine for a good few years to go yet. It will be an incredibly sad day for PC gamers when Nvidia do finally drop Pascal GPUs because it's just the absolute best Nvidia generation I've ever seen with God tier GPUs like the GTX 1070, the GTX 1060 six gigabyte, and of course the best GPU ever made, the GTX 1080 Ti, which I've made some videos on which you can watch up there. So then, like a lot of other Pascal graphics cards, the GTX 1070 has shown it's still fine for 1080p medium sort of low in newer AAA games, but you can get away with high textures thanks to the eight gigabytes of VRAM. So it's still hanging on in there. As long as you don't enable ray tracing or the ultra preset, you should be totally set. And if you want to play esports games, of course this GPU is going to be fine for that. If you want to see how another graphics card gets on, there is another video up there and one down there. And I'll catch you in the next one.